Let's talk about traveling and more specifically in the Philippines. I just did two and a half weeks in the Philippines and I started off in Manila before moving to El Nido and then to Chargao. When you go to the Philippines, the main places to go to are either Manila or Cebu. It's easy to fly out to other islands in the Philippines from Manila. The same with Cebu. Manila is the capital in the Philippines. It's super duper busy in a typical big city vibes. There's so many people. Very chaotic although I did stay there for three nights which was enough for me it's more business mindset there rather than on the islands my huge mistake that I want you guys to avoid is planning so I was told don't stress about planning you don't have to book ahead well you know please make up your mind a little bit because you are flying between the islands since I did not do the best of planning my tickets were so expensive flying from one place to another I booked my tickets through Skyscanner I recommend using that for all your travels and I went from Manila to El Nido in Palawan El Nido is the most beautiful place on earth like hands down one cool thing about the Philippines it's very tourist friendly so everything is made so easy for us and I remember landing on the airport in the middle of nowhere you're flying these small ass flights and you're landing in the middle of the jungle and then you just walk out and there will be a tuk-tuk most places will have a sign saying how much it will cost just so you don't get ripped off so in El Nido I just walked out found a tuk-tuk and it took me all the way to my hostel it is also very tourist friendly in that sense that it's easy to catch flights it's so easy to get on buses and boats when you go to hostels it's literally like a whole plan of things you can do things you can see how to get from a to b it is so well made also hostels in the philippines they are nice but due to the weather and the infrastructures they're not like the best and i was there where it was a uh, what's the word for it it's not a tsunami but it was just like a storm on its way so the electricity was on and off all the time we could not shower and go to the toilets during some parts of the day but you know it's it's literally how it works in the Philippines. I was kind of vibing with it. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, yeah, this is what we have to deal with. It's fine. The people are so freaking nice. Just ask them questions. English is one of the main languages in the Philippines. So it is very easy to travel around. When I was in El Nido, the same with Chargao, rent a scooter. I promised my mom, I promised myself I would never rent a scooter in any country because I'm too afraid of it. But to get around in the Philippines, you do need a scooter because the islands are quite big, way bigger than expected. And taking a tuk-tuk to all the different beaches is just going to be so expensive. So I did rent a scooter on both of the islands I went to. The roads are actually a-okay like they're not that bad traffic is not that heavy on the islands either and it was my first time renting a scooter and i nailed it even though it crashed into a bus and got a flat tire i still nailed it with distances islands are bigger than what you expect so when i was in el nido we had to drive to four different beaches which was fine and then in chargao the same vibe as well in chargao you have to pay entrance it's kind of like bali in a way so it, there's a lot of, you know, paying for everything that you want to see. Whereas in El Nido, it was more like, yeah, this is the beach we have. Enjoy it for as long as you want to. Also, on different islands, they have different time when you have to, like, be quiet. So in Chargao, all the parties actually ended at 12. And nothing more after that. You could have, like, small after parties, which was really chill and laid back. It was just, like, a rule. No parties after 12. And... You have to respect it. I know it's insane, I have to say it, but some people travel without respecting the country they go to, their rules, their culture, the locals. If there's a rule that the party is over at 12, the party is over at 12. Easy! So that's in Chargao. In El Nido, it was a bit different. It was more of like a relaxed vibe. You'll also find karaoke bars everywhere in the Philippines. Their culture is basically karaoke and singing. And you will, you will feel it. You'll get the vibe of it. It is amazing. Also in the Philippines, it's very normal to go on different tours. I know this is kind of normal in the whole of Asia. But in the Philippines, I would definitely recommend going on these tours because they take you out on the ocean to the most beautiful islands with those cliffs, sort of mountains in the water. 
The tour guides are so amazing. I had nothing but a good experience, especially in Alito. The tours were amazing. I did two of them. Then safety. I was traveling alone, solo female traveler. I felt safe. Partially because they knew how to speak English, so I knew that I could communicate with them. Most of the people at least. The people in the Philippines are so friendly. Like, I just can't... They're so nice, they're so positive, open. It's one of the countries I felt really safe in, even though the culture is so different from what I am used to. But just be aware of scammers. Filipinos even scam other Filipinos. It's a weird thing, so just be a bit aware of it. Always ask the reception at the hostels, like, how much should I pay just to get like a rough estimation. Because you really don't know how much a tuk-tuk should be or how much the grocery should be or anything. But just ask the other like locals and they, they, will, they will help you out. Being scammed is kind of normal, I guess. Also the Philippines, it's packed with tourists. But I feel like it's the good kind of tourists. The ones that are keen to understand the culture, to see things, to do things. The main points to take from this video is that it is safe for women. Just use your head when you're traveling there. They speak English quite well, so it's easy to get around, easy to communicate. The people and the culture are... It, it's amazing. So open, so friendly, a lot of karaoke. If you want to make it cheap, you have to pre-book tickets. Cebu and Manila is the main places to go to. And from there you can travel both in the country and out of the country. I flew from Cebu to Bali for an instance. Tours, tours, tours. That's how you get to see the best out of the best. Rent a scooter, I know it could be a bit like scary, but the roads are good, the people are good, not that much traffic, you will be safe and you will see some very good and hidden gems. The hostels are in okay shape, not amazing, not bad, but it's because of the weather and the infrastructure, it just can't be like top notch. But if you're staying at the hostel, having it top notch should not be something you're striving for. Hostels are hostels, let's be for real. And with that, I think that was everything. If you're going to the Philippines, have the best time ever. I am absolutely still in love with that place and it will forever have a special place in my heart. But that was it for now. I'll see you guys next Sunday with another video. Bye.